And welcome to Morning Matters. This morning we are broadcasting from Betway. With me, I have the privilege of interviewing today and introducing to you for the ones that don't know. I can't imagine who don't know, but if you don't know, today I am in Betway with Judy Boucher. Good morning to you, Judy. Good morning, Rhonda. I'm very well, thank you. I have to say that this is both a privilege and a pleasure for me um, to have you here today. I am very pleased that you took out the time. To spend with us here this morning um i am hoping that we can get into some matters <laughs> i know that you know you are vincentian by birth so you must be able to relate to some of the things that other caribbean women are going through mm -hmm. you know people see you on tv they listen to your album they think judy had to have had a glorious life she had to have been born with a gold spoon in her mouth because she couldn't do it any other way tell me a little bit about judy boucher well, Judy Boucher, I, born, I was born and um, grew up for the early part of my life in Dixon. That's on the windward side of St. Vincent, Georgetown. Georgetown. Georgetown girl. There you go. Yes. Um, lived there, led a very humble life, you know, with uh, my sisters and brothers. Um, I lived in Georgetown until I was probably about 10 years old. Then I was sent off to Kingstown. Where you got I, elevated. I, <laughs> <laughs> where I lived with um, some cousins of mine. Yeah, so I stayed there with them for about five years in Kingstown, in Cane Garden. Um, while my mother was in England trying to make a better life for us. Yes, that, that, that is the early part. That is the, the early, early part. part. Okay, um, you have had, uh, I would imagine in your time, quite a great exposure to the world. You know, you came from Kingston as a quiet, humble girl and since then you have traveled the world. You've seen a lot, done a lot um, for a lot of people. Um, that probably sitting down in Kingston right now watching and they're thinking, you know, she was lucky. Were you truly lucky? Would you say that you, would that be how you would uh, label your growth and your achievement as lucky or would you say you had to work? I had to work um, for what I have. I had to work for my achievement. Um, I think I'm the kind of person who believe if you have faith and you believe in God, you can achieve most things. And that is so true. I have a saying, I was not looking for fame. It came looking for Fame you. found me. Seriously, fame found me. Because there I was. Um, after the marriage, and that went on for a few years. I think about the time there was a massive change in my life when my son was just about four years old. My then husband became schizophrenic. I couldn't imagine anything being more traumatic. All be, it's okay if someone is ill and they recognize that they're ill. It wasn't the case. It was so difficult because he felt that everybody else is ill, not him. Everybody else is mad. I'm the same one and you guys are crazy. Pretty much, that was how he felt. How did you deal with that? Oh my God. It was 
When I said I didn't know, I can tell you about stress. I had to... Oh, obviously, when it, when it happened, I was trying to support my husband because I thought that maybe he will get better. So, you know, went on trying to get him to see doctors and stuff. But I don't think he ever believed that he, he, he was ill. But then when things got really rough and um, we began to get hurt. You mean physically? Yeah. You said we, that includes your children as well? Well, yes. Yeah, I had to be because, um, I don't know, schizophrenia is one of those things that it's like a split personality. You would see a man fighting with an imaginary person. Wow. Um, and, you know, many times the doctors would say to me, you need, you need to leave the house because at one point, he did go into um, a hospital voluntarily. But the, the problem with that is if you ad admit yourself, you can check yourself you out. Can check out. You can check out. So that, that, that's what was happening. But then the point came where he was, he was hurting me. And, and of course, I couldn't hug my son for all sort of different reasons. My, my, you know, my three-year-old going on to four-year-old son, he would beat him if he saw us cuddling. Oh, wow. You were not able to publicly display affection to your children? No. Why did that offend him? Because I think he thought I was uh, a bad person. He thought, he thought I was having like a sexual encounter with my son. He was that sick? Yes, he was very sick. How long did you stay in this relationship? Well, five, Under this condition? Well, five years. And you said before you stayed because you felt like he would get better? Yeah, I thought he would get better, but he wasn't willing to continue taking medication. So he would... Um, disappear for long periods, didn't know where he was, he would get involved with the police and not knowing, you know, he was, as we said, Ron, that he was that sick, that sick. So, um, but eventually um, I had to, I had to run. <laughs> I mean, I, I sit here and I listen to you when I look at you and People are always of the impression that people that are popular and powerful have simple, easy lives. Mm. They have no idea that you're just human yeah. and you travel through human emotions and human yeah. trials. When did you know that enough is enough? What made you say, um, you know what, this is it? Mm. A couple of times. Um, one time, for instance, there was... A person used to come to clean our windows at the house and the person came, cleaned the windows. I paid him and he was off. I was in the kitchen and I was washing dishes, just going about, you know, merrily. And then I felt this blow in my back, in my lower back, and I fell to the ground. I then... I was winded, of course. So I got, up, I got on my feet and I was so shocked. And I saw a knife on the worktop. I saw a knife. And it's just like a voice said to me, don't. <laughs> a voice said, don't. So I, le I, le I left it. Um, later that day, I, you know, I was inside with the, my, my, my son, my little boy. Yeah, 
Well, just chilling. He was relaxing yourself. Just re relaxing. <laughs> and um, I took him upstairs, you know, to bed. And um, I, I laid with him because sleeping wasn't uh, something that Excuse happened. Me, let me so um, we were just, I was just laying, you know, and then he came and he picked up my son. He just picked him up back by an arm and he just started beating him. And your boy was what, four years old? Yeah, he was coming up to four. And he just dropped him. This was his son as well? Yeah. Yeah. Um, well, and then later on that day, um, just sitting in the, in, the, in the front room, as we say, and what my husband did at the time was just a lot of pacing about. It's just like he's possessed and he talked, you know, the, it's just like he will be speaking to someone who isn't there. Yeah, and I heard him saying, I've got a killer. I, I have to do it tonight. Oh, wow. Yeah, I have to do it tonight. And he's saying it out loud and you're there. Yes, because he's talking to these voices. He hears and responds to voices. So I called my GP and I told, I told him what was happening. And his response was, I keep telling you, you need to leave the property for your safety and the safety of your children. You've got to leave. So I said, well, OK, you're telling me to leave. Where am I going to go? That is tr very I tried reactive. going. I tried going to my mom. He found me. And, you know. So he said to me, okay, this is what I want you to do. You pack a bag, any bag, any old bag, <laughs> and take your children and get someone to take you to the coach station. And he says, I will make arrangement for you to go in another county. So you'll be going to Oxfordshire. Someone, you get a bus to Gloucester Green Station in Oxford. Someone will come there and meet you. So, that was it. I was booked into a safe house with the kids. So, we stayed there. It was amazing. Living in a communal home, it wasn't nice. You go from having your own home. Yeah. But your own home, I guess, was not a safe place to be. No, it wasn't. So we went to Oxfordshire and it's what you call a women's refuge. So we stayed there for like, I think we were there for just over two months. It's a long time. Yeah. What, how did you but pass I didn't, I didn't, well, we just go for walks. And talk. And yeah, with, with the kids. But then the local authority were concerned that the children were not at school. True. Um, I asked them if they would rehouse me in Oxfordshire. They said no. You have a family home, and we suggest that you get you, you try to get back into your home so that the children can resume their education, etc. And um, so I said, "Wow, but he's there." Wow, indeed. I said, "He he's there. Can't do that." Well, they said, what you have to do to get an order to get him, to out. Get him out, to get him out. Um, so then I was assigned a social worker he, who helped me um, sort of get in touch with lawyers. And I had to go to another county to sort of get this order in place. It was horrible. How does Judy Boucher, or Judy Jack at the time, um, move from that to here? Okay. After we've, um, 
I got the, the order from the court. Well, he was ordered to leave the property. They gave him seven days to leave because the judge says, you are not helping yourself. He's not helping himself. He's not taking medication. And I need to resume a life for myself and, and, and children. So he ordered him to leave. He left the property and then he went into another county where his mother lived and she had a lot to say about me. Nobody came to see what was happening, but um, so my response to her was, okay, that's the way you feel. What can I say? I did my best. Um, and about a week later, she called again to apologize. She saw for herself. Yes, now. because he was with her and she said um, she had to get the police. And by then he was now sectioned. He was sectioned, uh, that meant that he had to go into hospital. He, for his, he, had to, he was forced yeah. to get treatment? Yes, yeah. yeah. Um, I believe that it was probably a little bit late. I think he was somehow damaged by then. So he went into to hospital and I used to go to see him and take the children to see him. Long, long way. And then I won, won, on one of the visits, um, one of the patients got a hold of my son. And it took about four nurses to get my son from him. And they said, never bring your kids here again. Oh. Don't bring your children here again. It's not safe. So he used to come home sometimes, but they, there was always a problem getting him to go back and to, you know, to resume treatment. So eventually I thought, um, and he felt that he had every right to tell me what to do. You are his wife. That's right. <laughs> was he a Caribbean man? Yes. Oh gosh. <laughs> he had a right to tell me. He wanted to tell me what to do and everything. And he did say, you are my wife. And you will listen to me as a good wife should. Yeah, yeah. That's exactly what, what happened. What did you say to him when he That's said That's exactly that? what happened. Are you listening? Well, I've already had a court order. So the next thing I did was to get a separation. Okay. Because as long as I was his wife, I would have no peace. So I got a, I got a, um, went to court, had a separation, and um, he wasn't very happy about it. He had a very good lawyer, mine. Excellent lawyer. I wish he was mine. <laughs> <laughs> Gave me a very hard time, but the judge says, No. A very resourceful woman taking care of home, taking care of kids. You're not helping. You're not helping. So that was the turning point. I got a separation. I got a decree. Nice eye. And then I think it was maybe six weeks off. I think it was six weeks after I got a decree. Absolute. Good. Same yeah. time. Yeah. And what happened after then? The after that, after I started that? building my life. I went to work. I started working so hard because. When you said you went to work, what did you went to work doing? I I I did anything that was going. I did cleaning cleaning jobs. I cleaned factories. I worked in factory. I used to do shopping for an old lady. And that's what I did. I did several jobs to get. Um, get on my feet, when pay bills, light bill, you know, all sort of stuff. And I did that. It took about five years for me to get straight. 
how did you move from shopping for the old ladies, cleaning in factories, to standing on stage? <laughs> <laughs> and not only on stage, but on stages mm. all over the world. Yeah. Five, I think it was about five years I, 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 was, I was getting straight. I was getting straight. I could see a light at the end of the tunnel, right? Back in my own home, have the kids, albeit I have a mortgage to pay, children to feed, and, and I was life is good. Yeah. So, one Sunday, I was just sitting. In the afternoon, I cooked rice and peas and the chicken. It's a good day. Yeah, it's a good day. And we were just settling down to watch the afternoon film, matinee. Then, I saw this, I looked out my window. And lo and behold, I saw this guy walking up to my house, carrying a guitar. I thought, hell no. <laughs> <laughs> Could this be your brother coming back? No, no, it wasn't. <laughs> I thought, once I saw that guitar, I thought, no, not again. I've done with that. I'm feeling so, I'm happy now. I've gone through that turmoil where, you know, with my husband and the schizophrenia and everything else. And I wanted to hide. <laughs> I wanted to hide. And I just wanted to hide behind the curtain. So he and didn't hoping, see you? yeah. <laughs> mm, hoping he would go away. But he kept knocking. And then my daughter keeps saying, But mom, mom, he's still there. Oh, mom, mom, he's still there. <laughs> Mom, mom, he's still there. And I wanted to say to my daughter, go and tell him that mom isn't in. But then I thought, hang on. She might go and say, mom, mom said, said to tell you that she's not in. You know, still 20. Yeah. So I thought, okay. So I went out and it was a guy from a, a rival group. There was another group. Not only Judy Jack and the Beast, there was another group in town. And this guy name was Felix De Silva. And he said, Hi Judy. Okay, I, I, I just want to talk to you. He said, I've been doing songwriting and I've got a few songs. And um, I was hoping that you would sing them. And you're thinking, I'm just settling down in my house. Yeah. My children just got fed. I really don't want to deal with this right now. Ooh. So he said, I said to him, nah, Felix, go away. And he said to me, um, I would go, but I'll be back. He said, think about it. I'll come back and see you in, in two weeks. And if you tell me to go away again, then I will go away. So he came back and he said, like I said, I'll come back. What do you want me to do? And he said, um, you know someone who is pr prepared to record the songs. And I thought, oh my God. You come tugging at your chain really hard this time. <laughs> yeah, yeah. So I said, what, my, my immediate thought was, well, what have I got to lose? So I said to him, okay, Felix, we'll do this. But when, when, I've done, when I've done this song, these songs for you, I don't want to see you at my door again. <laughs> I really don't want to see you at my door again. So then we went into London now to see this record company person. And he said to me to sing. And I sang and he just went, my God. Same sort of what I got from my brother. And um, so we started now rehearsing and same time went into the studio, tried to get these songs down. I, I, at first I, I found it quite difficult because I hadn't been into a studio before. I didn't have time to play. You were trying to make life. Yeah, yeah. So it was into the studio recording. And we were going along 
merrily. I, I couldn't wait to finish so that I can go back to my normal life. <laughs> or so you thought. Yeah, so I thought. So I thought. Um, and in recording and recording, then there was a track called Dreaming of a Little Island. That was my first ever release. Wow. That just shot up the reggae charts. Number one for about three months. You were the first female Caribbean artist to have held that position for so long. Mm -hmm. Yeah. And um, after that, we released another one called Lovely Paradise. Same reaction. Wow. By which time now we were almost finished the album and can't be with you tonight was that track <laughs> that gave me so much problems <laughs> he wrote this yeah the, the silver guy wrote this see felix the silver from felix from saint vincent from georgetown this georgetown man walked up on your step in england yeah and put you to task mm. it's like god sent him huh yeah Wow. Yeah. So we we were trying to do Can't Be With You Tonight. It was, a, it was a very difficult song. I found, they keep saying I need to put some more emotion into it, put some soul into it. And I wasn't sure what they were trying to do. Um, if I, 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 as far as I'm concerned, if I'm singing the song in tune, that's good enough. You know, that's good. But no, it wasn't enough. They wanted more. They wanted something else. So we went along. We were going along. And I was getting really fed up with this. Keep going into London on Sundays. You know, get, you know give my mom to, to watch the kids while I go recording. Sometimes I come back and I didn't get it right. So the whole day is spoiled in your mind? The whole day, yeah. And this happened time and time again. On this particular Sunday, I woke up and immediately I started thinking, oh my God, here we go again. Another Sunday. The oh, same song. Mm, same song. I got a little bit depressed. I got depressed. That's the emotion. And what happened? This, that's the emotion <laughs> they needed. That's exactly what they needed. They need that demeanor. Like that one. So it's so really it's just like I'm crying, man. You were crying inside and it showed. Wow. That was I went into that studio and hit it. Done. done. I said done. That was it. And then when I listened back. The goose pimples. Because you remembered how you were feeling Everybody. then? Everybody. The ghost pimples. You, you just feel that. Oh my God, listen to that voice. In, incredible. And uh, we struggled for airplay. Oh, we struggled. Um, because the DJs would say, oh, it's too sweet. It's too sugary. It's too lovey-dovey. It's too slow. If it gets any slow, it would stop. <laughs> Obviously, that's what he thought. So we couldn't get any airplay. But there was one station, I think it's Capital Radio in, in London, and someone took him a copy. And the only slot that he was able to to get the, a DJ to play was between four and six in the morning. Oh, Unsociable, uh, four <laughs> and six. But, it did it. but this lady driving to work at that time of the morning, she was doing um, a TV program. <laughs> Her name was Lizzie Webb. She was driving to work. She said she pulled over on the motorway when she heard it. And she called the station. She says, who's that? And where can I get one? Oh, wow. When it's to be, it's to be. It doesn't matter how much 
you you think you're being held back when it's your time you mm. will be shown yeah so she obviously got her copy and then a few mornings i'm getting people calling me and saying hey judy did you know that your song was being played on tv i said really <laughs> God. I said, no, I didn't know. I didn't know that. And she said, well, this lady who was doing aerobics. And of course, you might think it's a very unlikely song for, yes. <laughs> uh, for the aerobic program. So the next day, I thought, well, let me tune in. And there she was, exercising to can't be with you tonight. I thought... Oh my God, that's my song. Wow. That's my song. And you know, that week, that morning, the switchboard was jammed. It seemed as though everybody in England was calling. <laughs> Who's that? Ah, look. Everybody wanted one. It charted immediately. Life is beautiful, isn't it? Mm. That was, would you say that that was one of your, your earliest, biggest breaks? Well, that was my first break. <laughs> because although I did um, Dreaming of a Little Island, okay? Yes. That song used to be, we used to have a program in London called Reggae Time. And every Sunday, it used to be and it's number one again is judy boucher number one again but that didn't cross me over like no nah, yeah you have to hit the british market or the european market to be a crossover artist so when that happened yeah and i um charted that week at number 80 national charts i collected my first silver disc 250,000 copies wow i can't <laughs> be with you tonight silver disc and she invited me on to the program to exercise with her and i got my presentation like unbelievable because i didn't know I didn't know until she says, and we have your silver disc to present to you. Oh, wow. Oh. And from then on, just keep rising, rising. I was battling with Madonna. <laughs> I love that. <laughs> she said, I was battling with Madonna. Imagine, Judy Poucher and Madonna battling it out for that spot. Wow. Obviously. I did make it to number one, but um, so there was Starship. You remember that song, Nothing's Gonna Stop Us Now? Yes. So that was Starship, and then there was Madonna as well. So I was in there with the biggest of the big. Awesome. And, and I actually got the number one spot on a Friday, and Starship went over the head and removed me. <laughs> <laughs> but it was just... It was just amazing when, you know, when I go home and there, there'd be flowers and there'd be cameraman outside of my gate wanting interviews, you know, that they camp out there and, you know, I was, I remained humble because I'm humble. I'm Mrs. Humble. <laughs> I went on, I kept working. You kept working? I, wor I kept working. You because sang and you were, you had your own album out there at number one. And you it was working. a single at that point, yes. yeah? Mm. Uh, yeah, and, and number five in the charts. And Judy Boucher is still going to work. And um, I'm saying, listen, I haven't seen any money yet. I've got kids. That needs to I've eat. got a mortgage. And I kept going to work. These people, they said, all right, if that's the case, we have to come to your workplace. 
Oh wow! <laughs> so they had the, the, the whole news queue. Um, the 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 news people from, I think it was, ITV. They came to my workplace, and shoot and uh, you know oh they do that right. What is she like? <laughs> you know and get all my work colleagues to to speak and oh wow incredible so and then i guess didn't really look back but it got to a point where oh my god i couldn't keep i couldn't keep up i can't keep this up are you required in london for interview you you're required to do video were you managing Honestly. yourself at that time? I never had management. So when they call, they call your phone, they get Judy Boucher, you say yes or no to them and that's it. You were taking I, care of your own business. Yeah, but I remember, Rhonda, I wasn't looking for anything. You came looking for you. I was not looking for any fame. I was going to do Felix the Silver album and, and then go it. back to my old life. I was doing this guy a favor. You asked me to do this, I said, <laughs> I'll do this, and when I'm done, please, I don't, I don't want to see you again. But then... <laughs> wow. Oh, goodness gracious. So yeah. yes, and then I started, I had to promotion the album, the, the, the song, of course, crossed over Germany, Spain, France. You see, once you, you hit in you the hit. UK, you're gone. So, my feet wasn't touching the ground. And, you know, I, I thought, God, my kids. I was going to ask, how difficult was it at that time to it, move from being the mother and, and the sole provider and the hard worker that goes out to iron and clean and whatever it is that you did, to now standing on stage and still being close with your children. How it, did you manage it? It all was of difficult. That? I had mom. Thank God for mom. Thank God for mom. I I had mom. And um, and I had other sisters there in High Wycombe. But mom would always be there. I can always take the children to mom. If I'm going to Germany. You take the children to mom. Take my children to mom. And that's how it that's how it went. And that's how it went. That's how it went. So How we long did this continue for what? Ten years, twenty years, twenty-five um, years? No. There was th there was supposed to be a rude awakening. <laughs> there was supposed to be a rude awakening. Okay. Because I did everything I was supposed to do. I I promoted. Um but then after you you know when when you're in the charts, yeah? That's when the big boys come out. Everybody wants to play now. Everybody. That, that's when the and big they want to boys play dirty. came out. Not necessarily. They played nice with you? Must, they, well, I had, <laughs> lots, I, I, had lot, they play? I had lots of champagne dinners and <laughs> fantastic lunches. But there was, obviously there's something lacking. Because... I didn't know enough about the business. Very green. Green is what you should call me. And then there were companies used to say, well, okay, we'd like to take you to lunch. We need to talk to you. I'd go and then they would say, well, could we have a look at your contract? And then, then they'll go, oh, my God. Mess. I did sign it. I signed it. The reason why I signed it, I think it was a, a very difficult period for me. You know, for, for lawyers to look over contracts, you know. You're talking big, big yes. money, big money. Um, number one, I didn't know about the specialist lawyers. True. You, I mean, from where you came, this was all new to you. It was hitting it you was, quick and yeah, hard. Yeah. Um, I didn't know about the specialist, but I did take it to one lawyer, a solicitor, down the high street. And he said, it looks okay to me. There you go. It looked okay it, to you It looked too. okay to you. 
<laughs> so, he's probably thinking, oh yeah, here's another black chick thing she can sing. I don't know. Let me just give this a quick look and go yeah, because she uh, won't make it big. Nobody will buy it. So, right. it's nothing to kill myself over. Right. So, I signed it. And then um, you made it big. And then I thought, okay, I thought, well, the record, um, record company, um, record producer, he's black. He won't, he won't hurt me. But no, it, the contract was atrocious. It was, I don't know how to put it. It was that bad. This was your first, the first person you signed with. The, so he, whoever he was, he ended up owning you for lack of a better term. Yeah, he could have, uh, he could have owned me contractually forever. <laughs> It, it, it sound it sounds silly to say this but yes it was written in a way take for instance um, I was a young woman um, if say I took a year out of that contract say I wanted to have another child and I may take a year out it get added back on you will forever be the slave you yeah. can never get your air out you can slow down but you can't stop mm. mm-hmm yeah, um, but worse than that, the percentage was crap. The percentage of what I was supposed to get as royalty. For instance, there were guys like, I remember people like Rick Astley, you remember that name? If you sing one of his songs, maybe I'll tell you. <laughs> Uh, let's skip that part then. Okay. <laughs> but there, there, there were other people in the charts at that time and who would be command 25, 30 pence per single. I was getting four. And what I would get for Germany would amount to 2%. Oh, wow. Yeah, it was really bad. Yeah. So, and I only learned because... I've had these meetings with other record companies who are making you better proposals. Who are saying, oh my God, what have you done? Oh, you see? Wow. Of course, I'm tied up. How did you get out? So those, those, those um, figures with all them knots behind them. They mean something. They, you don't get them, but they I'm, mean something to somebody. Yeah, but I won't be getting that. How I can't. You? I'm tied up. You are tied to this, you need to get yourself out. How did you get out? Um, firstly, I approached the, the record company and I said, well, okay, it seems that everybody's making money here. How about uh, a bigger bite of the cherry? They said, no, you, they said, you signed it. You honor it. And then that's when I knew. I said, if I don't sing another note, so be it. So be it. So I was at home. Um, I wasn't working. And I said to myself, children still need to be fed. Mortgage still need to be paid. And you don't have much money coming, my girl. You went back to work again? I did. Wow. I did. Um, but I made an application to the High Court to try to get out of the contract. So, but unfortunately, in the music business, a year out is too long. So, all the other big record companies now have lost interest because they want money now, you know, they don't want it. They want their money yesterday. Yes. If they see an artist with that potential, they want to sign now. Strike, strike while the iron yes. is hot, yeah. So, um, realizing my position, I was, sat, I was sat there and thinking, wow, need to, need to go to work. So I saw this position with local government and I applied and I got the job. And I stayed with local government until November 2011. Wow. So I travel 
I travel, um, but I use my leave, my annual leave. So when I see you travel. in Belize or I see you anywhere, you're working your regular that job. That was, yeah. That was like your vacation as well as yeah. your time to shine and nobody mm -hmm. owns you then. That's you right. make your money, you put it in your pocket, you go about your yeah. business. Yeah. Um, and that is what you're doing now. Yeah. That is what yeah. you continue to yeah. do. Welcome back to Morning Matters. This morning from Beckway with Judy Boucher. All right, I'm going to beg that she give us a little verse before oh, we Oh, you're today. kidding. Because, you know, I am sure that we can't have Judy Boucher here without having her at least two lines. But anyway, today we are privileged enough to have Judy uh, help us out with some of these matters. Um, so, let's get into them, Judy. It says... Oh, I was going to ask you. A lot of times we notice that women send in texts saying, you know, I am through with my husband, but I feel like I have to stay because I want my children to be raised with their father. Do you think that is a wise idea? No. I believe that if, I should say, one good parent is better than two bad ones. Thank you. Yeah. Perfect. Right. Good morning. I have been with my baby's daddy for four years, but the birth of our one-year-old son, our baby, is his world. His actions sometimes say that he wants to be a family, but knowing him, he will never come out and say, I want my family. Do you think I should propose it to him? But I'm afraid of being rejected in the case that's not what he really wants. How should I deal with this? What does she actually what was the question really the question is she wants to know if she should propose marriage to her man mm -hmm. everything seems to be going good yeah but she believes that he wants to be married but he's never asked should she ask if, but if she's if, afraid if, of asking because no, she doesn't want to be turned she off. shouldn't be afraid if she wants to um to get married and she wants to marry him um let's say take the bull by the horn if he turned her down, does it mean that if he doesn't want to marry her, right? What does she want? If she wants to be married and he won't marry her, are you going to just stay? Find a man that wants, Find to, a man that wants to marry you. And the only way to know is to ask. Yes. Ask. You don't have to get down on your knee and buy a ring and all that fun stuff, but mm -hmm. ask him so you know ask. who you are. Yeah. This one says, I've been in a relationship for 22 years and married for eight before I got married, he cheated and now he's cheating again. I can't handle this. It's pain in my heart. End it. End it. Don't, why, why is she suffering like that? Why put herself to that suffering? He's done it before. He's doing it again. If she can't take, she obviously can take it. Because she's staying with it. She doesn't need to take it. No. But... I hope that other women and men alike use this as an example to see that if you, if I know that you're a cheater, mm -hmm. marrying you will not change your way. No. It only means I'm now married to, to a, a cheater. cheater. <laughs> right? So don't think, oh, because I marry him, his no. ways will change. Uh -huh. that yeah. Only makes yeah, no. This, that, that ring, that's not it. That's not the be all and end all. No, 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 no. Some people think, oh, I get a ring. You can buy it yourself. If yeah. gold is what you want, go out to the jewelry store and get yourself a ring. Mm. You know, nobody has to buy you a ring for you to be worth something. Go out That's and right. buy yourself some fine jewelry and That's wear right. them. Yeah. And they don't come with no pain. No. This is Morning Matters. I have this girl and she always goes out with other men. And when I tell her about it, she tells me that it's her friends, but I know something is going on with her. And one of the young men... He says, I know something's going on with her and one of the young men because she comes home late in the night. What should I do? You see, they keep saying, then, then no. The feel. The feel. Ask questions. But, but then he already said, he knows that she goes out with other men? Yes. What do you want? You want to catch them doing something? I think it so. It could be one of the two things. It could be your insecurities. Mm -hmm. It could be, and I can understand how you might think that if she comes in late all the time, but just be, so you know, she doesn't have to come in late to be cheating. That's right. You know, you could cheat in this hot sun house. Mm -hmm. Right? But, so that doesn't mean that a man or a woman is cheating because they come home at midnight. That's they could true. be out drinking rum, they yeah. could be out partying, mm -hmm. they could be out 
just regularly socializing. Yeah. But if so, your spouse yeah. is doing something yeah. you don't like. Yeah. You see, some people are just, what do they call them, night, night owls or people that stays out late, burning the midnight oil. I remember um, my mom. My mom never goes to bed before like one, two o'clock in the morning. Why? She just don't do it. Me? You'd be lucky to catch me out of my bed at 11 o'clock at night. <laughs> if you want to Some people are just that way. And ask her. Ask her. Tell her what you can live with and what you can't live with. And if you can't live with it, then leave it. Yeah. I love my man and he loves me. I got a baby for him. He bought his family. Oh, for him. But his family don't want me to get out. What I could do. Read it again, please. Yeah. I'll translate it into English for you. He has a man <laughs> and they have a child together, but... The man's family doesn't approve of their relationship. Well, does he want the relationship? If you Simple. and him want it, nobody yeah. else needs to concern That's right. himself. This Absolutely. Is between, between the two of them. Between the two of them. That's right. My child's father wants to go back to his wife. Let him go. Yep. Help him pack. He, he wants to go back to his wife. Help him pack. I always wonder, why is it that, and you maybe could help me out with this, why is it that people like chasing people that don't want them? I don't, I, I, I can't understand that one. If he doesn't, if he doesn't want you, let, let it leave him alone. He doesn't want you. Why are you chasing him? Or, 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 or the other way around. Why do they do that? They remind mm. me, I always use this analogy, you know, when you're driving out in the morning and you you leave the gate open and the little dog is trying to run your car down to get to work. Yeah. It will never <laughs> catch your car, you know. Yeah, nah. But it will run it to will the try. car and run no more. It will try. Yeah. It will be that little dog. Mm -mm. It's not healthy. You'll get tired, you'll get back home tomorrow, the same thing again. You jump in your car and she gone down there. Yeah. <laughs> you don't want to be the little dog, okay? You want somebody that wants you. Mm-hmm. This one says, I have a boyfriend and he always have mood swings. Now he has someone else and he, she's pregnant. What to do? That's not your man. That's somebody else's man. Sorry, yeah. I, I, had, I had to say that. It's true. You're, you're absolutely right. If he have mood swings, he have somebody else pregnant. And mm. you call him your man, something wrong. Yeah, no, 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 no. Something's wrong. I had a man who was living with... I make something that I make to eat. I give him and he want more. No more left. Okay. When you send me it, you have to send it as a complete thought. Okay. I, I know a lot of stuff, but I'm, I can't <laughs> read minds and I'm not genius. All right. Uh. Ay, ay, ay. Hmm. This one says, I live with my boyfriend, but I'm in love with someone else. And? You know, What's the problem? What's the problem? The problem, I believe that she she's having, she, 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 well, this is what you call a full-blown affair. <laughs> what does she want? <laughs> she's got, she, she got the best of both worlds. She's setting herself up for failure. Though. Yeah. She needs to come to, to reality with what is good for her and start working on it. Because it seems that a lot of people that send in their texts, their, their happiness is dependent on somebody else. Somebody else accepting them, somebody else mm, liking them, mm. somebody else taking them. That should not be the core of your happiness. Yeah. Morning. I'm 17 years old and I'm in second form. I don't want to go to school, but my mom is pushing me into it. I made up my mind. I want, and it's not school. What do you think? Girl, you're going to school. If you're going to school, yeah. Child, yeah. You have, have to, to go, go to, to school. school. And you might think that you're rebelling against your mother, you're rebelling against yourself. Without basic education, your life is dark and dreary mm -hmm. and dim. I'm not saying you have to go and get your, your bachelor's degree, but you need basic education. Basic education, yeah, at least. Right? And you might think you know what you want at 17. When you live three times 17, you realize, mm. gosh, I had no idea what I wanted. Absolutely, Absolutely. no idea. Hi, hi, hi. You know, wow. where morning matters is winding down, but I have to ask you this. What, in your opinion, separates the ones from achieve, that, that, that achieve from the ones that didn't in terms of life goals, just life in itself? Some people say, you know, I am, 
I just never get it. I will never get it. When some just get it, what separates them? This is a difficult to say, really. In terms of, say, me and you then? Yes. Some people would say, for the, for the past 30 years, I wanted to be a singer. Oh. And then some of them say, you know what? I am a singer now, you know. I've been a singer for the past 20 years. Mm -hmm. What's, what separates those two people? Um, you, if you want something badly enough, okay, first thing, you got to go for it. Uh, the, the English say, put yourself out there and dedicate yourself to what you want to do. Yeah? Dedi dedicate yourself to, say, whatever craft you want. And determination. Yeah? I want to do this. I'm going to go for it. Just, don't just talk about it. If there is one message that you can leave with Caribbean women, what would it be? Um, believe in yourself. Um, continue to be strong. I know there are strong women out there. Um, don't let anyone stop you from achieving your goal. Do the best that you can to achieve it. If you had a wish for your children, one wish, what would it be? That they'll always, as much as possible, be happy. This is Morning Matters, Judy Boucher. Thank you so much. It's yeah, been a pleasure welcome. and a privilege. I look forward to our next meeting. Oh, so do I. Guys, so do I. Next time, I encourage you to take care of yourselves and each other. This is Rhonda Crichton along with Judy Boucher. Thank you. Bye-bye. See you again. We'll be back. <laughs> <laughs>